Hello, loved ones. It's so good to be with you again today. Today, we'll be reading from our midweek lectionary passage, which is from the Book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. The New Revised Standard Version reads as follows. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote all about what Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you've heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So, when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It's not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has said by his own authority, but you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight while he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven suddenly two men in white robes stood by them they said men of galilee why do you stand looking up toward heaven this jesus who had been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven let us pray Dear God, we thank you for this, your word. We ask that you hide it in our hearts, that we may be always connected to you. Let your word fall like seeds into fertile ground and grow as you see fit. In this, your mighty name I pray, amen. As we know, the writer of the book of Luke is likely the writer of the book of Acts of the Apostles. We could consider the book of Acts to be Luke part two or combine the books into Luke Acts. The author is writing to offer proof to Theophilus or friend of God about the works of the apostles who were growing the community of Jesus followers after his ascension. This book opens where Luke leaves off in his first book and where I left off with you a few weeks ago, accounting for Jesus's resurrection and the ascension of Jesus to heaven. In the lectionary passage, we see that the author tells of the final days of Jesus and his ascension. Where I'd like to focus is on verse three, which says, after his, Jesus's suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. I call this exploration, have a little talk with Jesus. In our exploration, we're gonna do a little time travel. I have faith that in our travel, we'll get clues on how we can talk with Jesus, even in our most painful moments. Let's start with the Sankofa moment. You may be familiar with the hymn from which I get the title of today's sermon, Have a Little Talk with Jesus. The refrain of the song goes, now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry and he will answer by and by. And when you feel a little prayer wheel turning and you know a little fire's burning, find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. 
we learn from the hymnology archive that this hymn is likely to have been based on a gospel camp meeting song and a Negro spiritual. Publishing of the two similar songs date as early as the 1890s are part of a collection of spirituals that were published by HBCU Fisk University in 1902 and performed by the Fisk Jubilee Singers even earlier. The rendition of the hymn that I recited and am most familiar with was arranged by African-American pastor Reverend Clevant Derricks, who is said to have composed his more bluesy rendition in the middle of the Great Depression. If we hold true, the origins of the gospel song and spiritual to be in circulation as early as the 1890s, then I can see why the marginalized communities on this soil would need to have a talk with Jesus while enduring disenfranchisement, the start of Jim Crow laws, lynching, the fourth depression in the 1890s, continued disenfranchisement and harm leading up to the Great Depression, especially when the song was remixed in 1930. That was the talk with Jesus then. But let's go way back then. Here's a time travel. Come along with me to the conversation with Jesus after his resurrection during the 40 days. 40 days, which being possibly a metaphor for a long time or even to account for the time between Passover and Pentecost, coinciding with Christ's death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. Yes, let's travel back. Now, some of y'all might want to do the full 40. Others of y'all might wish to tap out at 10 and it's all good because Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you, but we're all going together. Before we go, it's worth noting that Jesus uses cultural relevance and responsiveness, appropriate metaphors, imagery, and parables to discuss the kingdom of God. We say kingdom, they say kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. He's in community with a group of people who are in exile and oppressed by a kingdom and emperor. These are folks who were once expecting Jesus to be like Barabbas and lead an insurrection to overthrow and supplant the ruling empire. So Jesus uses the language of the people to show the way in which God is imminent, ever present, and prevails in spite of current circumstances. Now, because Jesus is the beginning and the end, we're able to have conversations that include relevance from then and now. So this will require you to suspend Eurocentric linear thinking and to acknowledge God is present to all that exists within all the human experience, past, present, and future. Okay, here we are. We're now in the room with Jesus, who has healed us of all manner of diseases, and we're chatting. Each one of us submit questions to Jesus because he keeps talking about how he's about to go away. So folks are like, before you go, answer me this. Jesus obliges while we nibble on a hearty spread prepared by the good cooks in the family, which includes fish for the pescatarians, a little lamb, and plenty of fruit and veggies for those of us on that Daniel diet. We're in good company because the people present know marginalization very well to the point that they're still anxious about the restoration of the kingdom of Israel. I agree to be the transcriber and note taker. So I've taken a few, I've noted a few of the questions and answers from the 21st century group and point you to specific resources for further exploration. First question, Jesus, how will we know your voice? Jesus responds, stay in the conversation so that you begin to see the distinctions. When I was a child and during my purification at the temple, 
I was greeted by the prophet Anna of the tribe of Asher. Remember her? After her husband died, she chose not to remarry, which was a big deal because she was living her life in resistance to the establishment that would say that she needed to be married in order to be seen as a person, have access to wealth and sustenance. Well, she chose to stay in the conversation with God. She never left the temple, worshiped continuously, fasted and prayed day and night. I remember her gazing at me. I remember her lifting her voice to praise God and prophesy about me, saying that I would be the redemption of Jerusalem. Now you, you're the temple of God. Peter will expound on this concept later on about being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood. And given that you are the temple of God, then like Anna, you can choose to resist the wiles of the establishment and worship fast and pray continuously to see me, hear me, know me. Your heart becomes attuned with every single conversation you have with me. Yes, I gave you a model for prayer. And at the same time, just tell me what's on your heart. Literally, just start talking. You don't need to, do you think that I, I don't get your words or that I can't get a word to you? Anna recognized me because she stayed in the conversation. She saw redemption because she stayed in the conversation. She didn't leave the conversation until she got the answer. And even then, she stayed in the conversation, rejoicing for the answer. I'm not a liar. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you search and you will find knock and the door will be opened for you for everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds and for everyone who knocks the door will be open is there anyone among you who if your child asks for a fish will give a snake instead of a fish or if the child asks for an egg will give him a scorpion if you then some of whom are evil, break up the fallow ground, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the heavenly father give the Holy Spirit, which leads and guides to all truth, to those who ask him. I also hear in your question, a need to know more about the different ways to be with me in conversation. Those of you 21st century folk may want to check out Pastor Mike's sermon on postures of prayer. You can find it on the YouTube dated September 18th, 2016. But above all, stay in the conversation in order to hear, know, and experience the voice of God. Next question. Jesus. Is there anything that's off limits for our discussion? Jesus responds, I believe you heard the question on the table about whether this is the time when the kingdom of Israel will be restored. My response is not for you to know the times or periods that God has set by God's own authority is not to dismiss the question, but instead to acknowledge God hasn't revealed it yet. Some of you 21st century folks may hear, stay out of grown folk business. No, that is the answer. And the rest of the answer, in addition to God hasn't revealed it yet, is for them, the apostles, to wait for the promise of the power from on high. But notice that I don't say, don't ask me that question. I want you to talk with me about everything. I know it anyway. 
you may wish to even talk with me, let's say, about your worthiness. When I first encountered Peter, he didn't really know me. He was kind enough to let me teach from his boat. And afterwards, I asked him to cast his net to catch fish. And he was so amazed by how much fish he caught by virtue of knowing me that he fell down at my feet and said, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. I responded, Do not fear. From now on, you will be catching men. Talk with me about your unworthiness, your fears, concerns, sadness, anxiety, missteps, and more. Let me hear your faintest cry. I'll answer you. I'll answer you about your worth that outshines the establishment that seeks to dis to dismiss and dis and diminish and literally starve you. I'll remind you that I feed you like the ravens, the lilies, and the grass. I'm the one who can add hours to your lifespan. I calm the seas in your life. I am the one who even the winds and the waters obey. Do not be afraid, little flock, for God has chosen gladly to give you the kingdom. Also, you may want to view Pastor Donna's sermon on YouTube, Where God Is, dated for July 23rd, 2017, on how to build an intimate relationship with me. So stay in the conversation, knowing that nothing is off limits. And finally, question, Jesus, when will this suffering end? Jesus responds, I'm glad you asked me that question because that says you feel as I do deep pathos for this world. I remind you of the scripture I read from the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. To you followers who have walked with me, I tell you to go to Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit. To you 21st century followers, I remind you that you have the power of the Holy Spirit. The same power that raised me from the dead. The same power that I gave to the 70 to heal, cast out demons, and hold authority over all the power of the enemy. You and your community, who you call the kingdom of God, have the power to, with me, end the suffering. And that requires you to talk with me in community. I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. Love God, love your neighbor. Be curious, open, and loving as little children. Resist the seduction of the establishment that offers a feigned promise of being seen and taken care of at the expense of crippling the very essence of you, your soul. Know that I will take care of you and so much more. We do this together. My work happened in community and greater that you will do happens in community. And... You may also wish to, to visit The Way Los Angeles on YouTube for Pastor Jocelyn's current sermon series in Ephesians on the principalities that seek to disrupt community and how to tap into me and community to overcome. Stay in conversation with me toward ending suffering. Now let's conclude. We've finished our travel, so welcome back home. During our trip, we saw that Jesus spends a little while with his followers to open their minds to the scriptures after his resurrection and before his ascension. 
His time spent is in conversation and Jesus wants to continue the conversation with us. In constant conversation, we come to Noah's voice. In conversation, we open ourselves to expansive talks about what's real for us. Nothing is off limits, including the witnessing and ending of suffering. Jesus tells his historical followers to go to Jerusalem and wait on the power from on high. So, 21st century followers, stay tuned for Pastor Tanisha's words during Pentecost. We have answers that we don't often realize. It's a trick of the adversary to keep us from talking to God and each other. Recently, I've participated in God Talk with several of you in community where answers were illuminated for me and where I felt the presence of God in my home despite using some of the clunkiest technology. What was important is that I remain in the conversation with God. Now, I'm reminded of another hymn that I learned in Sunday school. Whisper a prayer. In the morning, whisper a prayer at noon, whisper a prayer in the evening to keep your heart in tune. Tune your heart to God by remaining in the conversation. God bless everyone. May God keep us and always cover us. Amen.